guys, this is Ruroni K95 here. It's time for to do my album review. So, last time, four years ago, I've already taken a look back on my album review on Merciful Fate's second album, Don't Break the Oath, which I did four years ago, back in 2018, I guess, though. So, for today, I'm going to be doing an album review, and... This is going to be on a certain album I have been listening to throughout the, my life I have as well. ACDC's album, Back in Black. Yeah, it's this album. Sorry if it's a little faded, if it's a little too dark on there. Yeah, it's ACDC, though. Yeah, if you can see on there. Yeah, you can tell, though. Because before we get into the tracks, I'm going to get into my own little history in depth about ACDC though. And give you my knowledge on that. Because for all this as well Since October 5th, 1980, where those shows between Milwaukee and Madison, Wisconsin, they had someone lost $50 playing a poker with ACDC on the tour bus for a freelance writer with no expense accounts. When he's living on unemployed check X, there was a lot of money for the ACDC drummer. Phil Rudd and bassist Cliff Williams and the singer Brian Johnson, who is the... Yeah, because the a free someone who works as a freelance writer, or basically, lost in a bet though. When Back in Black had sold five million copies on there in the U.S., which it, it total stands at nineteen million copies on here, Back in Black is one of those best rock-selling albums at the time in 1980 because it comes to this fresh though of how this begins on February 9th 1980 Bon Scott who is the vocalist and lyricist of ACDC has died after choking on his own vomit it because he died after a drinking spree because he was choking his own vomit in his sleep at when he was like 33 years old. <laughs> yeah, he was migrated from Sydney, Australia. Uh, no not Sydney, uh, Glasgow, Scotland to Sydney, Australia. Yeah, because... He was basically the front man of ACDC, though, because... When he was out at the microphone magnetizing the women in the audience with a street corner, like charisma feel, while the other guitarists the lead guitarist, Angus Young, is the guitarist of the ACDC. Rhythm guitarist, Malcolm Young, has piloted the rhythm section when Angus Young tore up on the floorboards on his schoolboy antics. When Scott, Bon Scott died at the, uh, who is, which is the part, which he, you know, because he was basically the, the original um, front lineup, front man lineup for ACDC, that's why. And his legacy goes on, though. After they were sold millions of albums, such as High Voltage, Let There Be Rock, Power Rage, and, Hi their, and Highway to Hell, which is the last album to feature Bon Scott, who because he was the original vocalist of ACDC. So.
you know, because so they wanted to figure out a way of how what his him, him for what this how has gotten to for what ACDC had a lot to do for this one as well. When Angus and Malcolm Young were writing and rehearsing for n their new album, ever since Bon Scott's death, because they were going to figure out if they rang to the. They originally wanted to have a uh, Naughty Holder, who is the the lead, the the singer of uh, frontman of the rock group Slade from uh, Wolverhampton, England, but. S Naughty Holder from Slade has never getting involvement if he was never interested in it because he decided to pass on that. So they are, that's particularly well this was basically two days after Bon Scott's funeral in Fremantle on the 1st of March in April as well so they decided to hire their lead singer Brian Johnson who is the replacement for Bon Scott in that one yeah because yeah the yeah Brian Johnson is the the, the lead sing, the new singer for ACDC since 1980 yeah he was for um, Newcastle he had his son Brian Johnson is the coal miner's son from Newcastle, England, when he was from his rock group called Geordie. Not only at the pipes on there, because, but for how Bon Scott's seal of approval. When Bron, ever since Bon Scott has saw Brian Johnson in concert with Geordie, how he was impressed. Yeah, because Angus Young explained that Bon Scott never liked many people. Yeah, because yeah, they decided to hire uh, Brian Johnson because they as a replacement for Bon Scott, which is two days after Bon Scott's death. And yeah, because I thought this particularly so they had their credibility for what ACDC wanted to hire a their new lead singer in that one because yeah they just how the decision was made so apparently they hired Bon Scott no not not Bon no Brian Johnson Brian Johnson is the the lead singer for ACDC because Bon Scott died in his sleep when he choked on his own vomit because he Bon Scott was a alcoholic. Yeah, because that's how his death happened at the age of eight, 33, what Bon Scott had as well. But Brian Johnson, on the other hand, when ACDC wanted to set up shop at the Compass Point Studios with a good flash of warrior attitude, when they wanted to he arrived at the airport in Nassau. The customs inspector seized on Malcolm Young's guitar when he told Malcolm to put a, pull it off from him. Brian Johnson recalled all, all that went and saying, uh, and they just wanted to do for an album live, and he ended up in prison. The next six weeks happened for the business. Producer Robert John Mutt Lange, who worked on the Honors for Highway to Hell album, always wanted to become on these one of those most successful console doctors in the recording industry for what they had a lot to do on this as well. When the charismatic way as how they have a lot to do for this, like accordingly as well. Back in Black what was basically a marvel of a rock and roll synchronicity for the dynamic new lead singer like Brian Johnson. Angus Young's riffs library of how it's considered 
I rated the violence of Angus Young's guitar riffs, guitar breaks, and the production is all in the luminous and the bulgeting. If the heavy metal nation knows if, how these hits near on the opening, like particularly for how this particularly because if this album would, would have been a silent tribute to Bon Scott, even though Bon Scott died as well. So let's get into the tracks of the songs we're going to be breaking into as well. Okay, Hell's Bells is the definite, def, definient title track of how it sets off a, in a dark, plain spoke oaken heat of the song like let me put my love into you such as the opening claim and the iron march such as the song hell's bells which is the first title track of the song of how this sets off the tone as well And this explains of how this goes. Shoot to Thrill, track two, in my opinion, I thought this song was very good and it's very unique and it's how we get another, the second ACDC track with Brian Johnson on the vocals in that one as well. Would you do for money, honey? Yeah, because they. I thought the song was pretty good, though, because. Yeah, and it was alright, though, because. Which is a lot more different, unlike most other previous albums of what ACDC did back in the 70s, though. Given the dog a bone. Yeah, this song, particularly. You just got a unique of these guitar riffs and especially the guitar breaks especially like when he into the guitar riffy like bluesy kind of influence feel like the riffs especially for what Angus Young had a lot to do for this one as well let me let me put my love into you well for this song though particularly yeah this basically explains to learn over the fact as well oh because especially for the define it as how it's gotten for this how it's going on back in black the greatest song by ACDC and it's becoming a hit single on there alongside with Hell's Bells because this all has gotten to for the point out to how this is going on for this like accordingly and in addition to that because the song Back in Black was heard in the the movie such as Iron Man and you also hear it in the previews of the trailer for Lilo and Stitch as well. You Shook Me All Night Long. In my opinion, that was the greatest song by ACDC that has ever recorded ever since. Like, and I get, in my opinion, this is actually my favorite song from ACDC, in my opinion, because I have been listening to this song, though. I mean, I just love... The guitar solo, because I thought it was very cool, though, because just from what I think about it as well, like, accordingly, just to learn over the fact as well. I mean, everything that's how ACDC has been doing in the 80s, ever since kind of like how they did in the way, like how they did right back in the 70s, which is the, the uh, high voltage album, the... Uh, probably the the album TNT and the international version of High Voltage album and Dirty Deeds Dunder Cheap album 
Let Let There Be Rock, Power Rage, and Highway to Hell. And If You Want Blood, You've Got It, which is another album as well. Have a Drink on Me, that's another song, which is the eighth track in the song from ACDC as well, because everything this ever goes on, though, yeah, this song has been mentioned about drinking, though. Yeah, it was a very good song, the uh, Shake a Leg, it's alright, I mean, it's very something new for how it's gotten a lot to do. This is something new for what ACDC has ever recorded as well. And at last, rock and roll all n rock and roll ain't noise pollution. Yeah, this is their last track on the album though because this is their 10th track on the album though. Ever since ACDC has been basically had a lot to do when they wrote it newer songs when Brian Johnson is the singer for ACDC though accordingly as well however most of the songs like Back in Black and You Shook Me All Night Long have gotten hit singles though because like that are off of the album however it, some of them appeared on their compilation album in the 80s who made who as well and you got to if you ever want to tune in to think for this if this could have been all of that as well accordingly as for what I reasoned however this album was released in 1980 which I'm guessing around the same year as Venom did their album welcome to hell Kiss did their album, Unmasked. Um, we have Heaven and Hell for Black Sabbath as well. Kiss did their album, yeah, Unmasked. Yeah, because particularly this is how it's all gotten to this. However, if this album ever has gotten a lot of success on there, particularly if for what I come by to this as well, according of how I wanted to come um, by on all things at once. And also, we had um, the first Iron Maiden album, which is their 1980 self-titled debut album, came out around that same year as well. If I could remember on this as well. Yeah, because when it comes to having these albums from rock bands, metal bands in the 80s, this is a lot something is what they have for what's in store as well and I still must say for, for this as well oh we and we also had that Ozzy Osbourne's first solo album after he left Black Sabbath Blizzard of Oz as well if I get to remember as far as I know as if I could come by to this anything has ever for what they have ever did as well. However, ACDC's Back in Black album, in my opinion, I guess I considered this to be my favorite album, in my opinion, because why not? Because can't go wrong with ACDC doing this. Um, I mean, I think I might like this album over Kiss's album, Dynasty, because... Well, because the Dynasty album from KISS was the, the disco album, though. Well, disco may be outdated in the 80s, though. Well, for well, KISS's album Dynasty, you have to be in the mood for if you ever wanted to listen to an album with a disco hit. But Back in Black, you could throw it any time as well, because if you ever wanted to listen to a hard-rocking album... Because, think about it. This is my favorite ACDC album, in my opinion, though. That's why. Now, if this was Kiss's album, Sonic Boom, then I would have been compelled for an album. If you ever want to listen to which one, if you ever want to start to choose for it, things comes first. But, it's ACDC's Back in Black. 
which is their album, which I think this came out in this year, in during the, the beginning of the 80s, after the 70s were over, ever since the disco has been died as, out as well, as well as New Wave kicking in, and punk rock has been kicking in as well, into the depths of this as well. However, we do have Motorhead had their album, The Ace of Spades, also came out in the 80s as well, if you ever listen to something very good, if you ever want to tune in for that as well, accordingly as well. If you ever want to tune in to listening for an album which you want to listen to that is something that is good, this is the biggest example for what I wanted to care about mostly as well. Yeah. Yeah, because I wanted to talk about a certain album like this as well. People genuinely think if you could know. If I wanted to come by on that as well. Yeah. And on top of this, though, yeah, that's the image. This is something that's everything that ACDC has ever did in the 80s as well, huh? Because, however, ACDC has been on tour with other rock groups, like specifically certain ones, like when they were on tour with Slade, Blackfoot, Whitesnake, and other music rock groups that are part of the Monsters of Rock tour in the 80s as well. Because if you ever wanted to know for this accordingly as well. Particularly if how... If you ever really wanted to come by on talking rock history though. If, if you ever been a rock metal enthusiast though because I'm starting to get getting into the thing as well because this is everything I have as well accordingly for the fact as well so for my thoughts on the album ACDC's Back in Black in my opinion however I got the CD back in 2009 though when I, during my freshman year in high school though I haven't listened to this album until how many years later? Um, let me guess. 2013... Uh, uh, no, 2014, which was how many years later? 2014... 10, 11, 12, 13... Five years later. I think I listened to this album five years later in 2014 because I had a good thing to listen to this album. I have been listening to this all, all the way through like, when I was listening to it on my CD player, though, because I just want to come by for this. And it could be all things at first go. It was this as well. And if you ever want to listen to most albums as well, because... Yeah. If you ever wanted to do something for this as well accordingly as well yeah people genuine to think for how you ever want to come by to this accordingly as well yeah because ACDC's album Back in Black was the first album to feature Brian Johnson after Bon Scott died that's why because However, I have been listening to this album because it's been a long time since I listened to it, though, because I just wanted to know because I ha still remember for this as well, accordingly as well, because I just wanted to think come things goes first as well. If you ever wanted to listen to a an album that is something good, Something that is more, you guess I like to call it as, to learn over the fact on this, 
accordingly if you ever want to listen to a album as well. So the, the the music is pretty good in the album though. And for overall on this album, ACDC's Back in Black is the the greatest album in my opinion though cuz I considered it to be my all-time favorite album by ACDC among other my favorite albums unlike most albums from other music artists that I listen to in general though and my score for the album 10 out of 10 though and yeah that's all I have what I got as well Whew. wow this is the first time I wanted to review an ACDC album that I have never done one like this until now. So that's going to be it for my album review on ACDC's album Back in Black for today's album review. Thank you for watching, but before we go, here's what I'm going to say for, about this one. This is the second album review video that I wanted to do, which is after reviewing Merciful Fate's Don't Break the Oath album, which I think I did my first album review four years ago, back in 2018. Yeah, that was four years ago, which I think I remember for this. And I could be all things if I could remember for all this as well. Hope to subscribe for more content. Be sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Be sure to check by clicking on the subscribe button, especially for new to my channel, because I've been literally getting into DVD and Blu-ray shopping videos, especially from flea markets to pawn shops, library book sales, thrift stores, and etc. as well. And also, I'm literally getting into movie reviews and TV show review videos and DVD and Blu-ray collection videos. And also, I've been literally getting into the Blu-ray as well. And also, DIY videos, like including whenever I buy my patches for my battle jacket, because I'm also getting into my... DIY videos as well. So stay tuned for this as well. Let me know your thoughts by leaving the comments or by leaving the comments in the comment section below. Smack the like button if you enjoy the video. Hit the notifications bell button. Be sure to get notified also as well for more latest videos and just to keep you get updated and notified as well. Be sure to check out my anime planet or analyst at your leisure at this point. And that's all I have what I have to, for this video to say. This is Ruroni K95 saying thank you for watching my video and I'm glad you liked it. I hope you enjoy it. Hope to see you soon for the next video. Be sure to stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great day. This is Ruroni K95 signing off. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you soon for more upcoming videos that are on the way. Take care.